वेलकम एवरी वन दिस इज द संडे एक्सप्रेस ऑफ ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट अगस्त ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू एंड आई विल एक्सप्लेन दिस न्यूज़ इन थ्री स्टेप्स फर्स्ट वाई इज द न्यूज सेकेंड वॉट इज द न्यूज एंड थर्ड वट कैन बी द फ्यूचर प्रॉस्पेक्ट ऑफ द न्यूज सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट विद अवर फर्स्ट न्यूज सी बी आई बिगिन्स क्वेश्चनिंग इन डेली एक्साइज पॉलिसी प्रोप प्रिपेयर्स मोर समन्स सो वाइस इज न्यूज एज यू नो The CBI have called Manish Shodia, who is the Deputy Chief Minister of Delhi, in case of liquor scam case, in which government provided a, a waiver of hundred plus crore rupees to these private liquor selling authorities. So it is saying that documents seized during searches are being scrutinized. says cbi officer after cbi uh, fir eow likely to close its preliminary probe so this is uh, happening in delhi we will see what were the uh, be the result of this uh, search what uh, sisodia is talking uh, regarding this search he said that may arrest me in 2 to 4 days next election is modi versus kejriwal and also uh, at a press, uh, press conference in delhi uh, bjp hits back and uh, anurag thakur who is a union minister he said that manish jaib at deputy cm so we will see in the future that what will be the result of this investigation Going forward, there's a news: UK, Gulf countries, and Egypt among seven locations on IIT expansion list. So, why is this news? As you know, IIT, which is uh, Indian Institute of Technology, it is a government institution and one of the biggest and uh, one of the biggest and uh, branded institution. regarding uh, studies of engineering as well as technology so what is the news uh, this news is regarding uh, iit opening its uh, uh, having its global expansion and opening its own uh, institutions in the name of iit abroad which is uk uae egypt saudi arabia qatar malaysia and thailand as prospective locations for offshore campuses under the indian international institute of technology so this will be the brand name iit in iiit it's like indian international institute of technology this is the brand name and uh, this will be opened so what are the main uh, prospects of this news iit delhi preferred by UAE, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Malaysia, less than twenty percent Indian students to be admitted, and ten to fifteen percent royalty on expenditure for domestic IIT involved. So this is a, a good initiative by government, and it will obviously help the international students to study. get educated in the fields of uh, technology as well as engineering in the brand names of such uh, superior institutions such as iit so it's a very good initiative and in future we will see uh, more of it in other uh, institutions as well such as uh, in medical fields also we can see so our next news is this opinion page so every sunday in the indian express we know that p chidambaram have an uh, article regarding uh, his views he gives his opinion so this time he is uh, having a topic wish honorable pm will say so he is wishing that our honorable pm will say something we'll see what he is trying to say so looking at this my foremost worry is the growing communal divide no country can progress until all people especially women 
Dalit, Muslims and tribals feel safe and secure and are able to share the fruits of progress. I accept that my party has to shed its prejudices and my government has to do more to put an end to divisic rhetoric. So he is talking that, talking about equality, he is talking that no country, even not even India can progress until all people feel safe and secure and are able to share the fruits of progress that whatever the progress is happening in our country India all of them whether women whether Dalit whether Muslim tribals all of them are able to share the results of the progress so we will start brothers and sisters so he is referring to the readers on this day 75 years ago India woke to life and freedom so he's talking about Independence Day, whenever India got independence 75 years ago. In the words of Jawaharlal Nehru, our first Prime Minister, we made a tryst with destiny. Successive governments have done their best to preserve and protect our constitution. So he's talking that, uh, as you know, uh, during the time of independence, Congress was uh, the party and uh, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru was leading it. So he said that successive governments have done their best to preserve and protect our constitution, to defend our sovereignty and territorial integrity, to spur the growth of our economy, to provide health, education, jobs and succor to our people. There were indeed aberrations and failures. So he's talking that there were some failures there were some uh, 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 aberrations but whenever we stumbled and fell we picked ourselves up and continued our journey so he said he is saying that whenever we fall uh, we get up and we led our journey to be continued by ourselves democracy was able to correct our errors and overcome our failures so he is saying that democracy was a key part. The, the morals and the values that democracy has taught us, these was able to correct our errors and overcome our failures. That is why we renew our pledge on this day every year to remain steadfast on democratic path. So he is saying that because democracy has helped us to overcome our failures, we to this day, to even today, we renew our pledge to remain on the democratic path. Now he's talking about truth. He's saying that time for truth. I have spoken to you on eight occasions from this very spot on the ramparts of the Red Fort. I spoke as Prime Minister and as a leader of a party. Today I wish to strike a different note. While speak, I speak to you as a head of the government, I also wish to speak as a fellow citizen who understands and shares your sorrow, concerns, hopes and aspirations. Please bear with me while I speak the truth, which in some aspects is quite painful. So he is saying that in the last eight years, my government has made mistakes that have affected our economy. So he is uh, talking in behalf of Prime Minister and uh, what he is trying to say is that in the last eight years my government had mistakes that have affected our economy. The first mistake was demonetization. So I would say that this is not uh, said by Prime Minister. This is being written by P. Chitambram, but it is about uh, from the uh, inner feeling of the Prime Minister, what he is, he is trying to say that what Prime Minister feels from his inner side, this uh, man P. Chitambram is trying to reveal that side of uh, our Prime Minister by the help of his own words. So he is saying that he uh, the biggest mistake was demonetization. I was advised that demonetization would eliminate black money, reduce corruption and end terrorism. 
I did not heed the caution of the Governor of Reserve Bank. None of the objectives of demonetization has been achieved. So it's talking that I did not listen to Governor of the RBI and also talking that no objectives, no goals have been achieved with the that demonetization was or two. On the contrary, demonetization set back the growth rate, caused a huge loss of jobs and above all led to the closure of hundreds of thousands of MSMEs. So he's talking that, so he's saying, uh, the Peach Chitamarins wants to say this, but he's saying through the language of our Prime Minister. So he's saying that demonetization uh, stunted, or you can say set back the growth rate and it caused a loss of jobs and closure of hundreds of uh, micro, small and medium enterprises. And he's talking about the next mistake which is GST laws and said that it was poorly drafted and hurriedly passed. That is, was passed in very uh, great hurry. I wish I had accepted the advice of chief economic advisor and opposition leaders and adopted a moderate single rate of GST. So he's talking that uh, in the language of Pichu Damram he's saying that uh, he wished that Prime Minister could have uh, accepted the advice of chief economic advisor and opposition leaders and can have adopted this single rate of GST, we find ourselves trapped in a law that has vested arbitrary power in the central government, created great mistrust between center and state. So he's saying that this GST law vested immense amount of power in the hands of central government and it created a mistrust between center and state and saying that caused huge resentment among business and trading community is saying that this GST law created huge sorrow and resentment among the business and trading community, community and stoked inflation. That means it has a rise, uh, it has led to rise in inflation. I realize that I have mounted a tiger that I cannot dismount. So he is talking that I intend to consult renowned economists and opposition leaders and bring GST 2.0, replacing the present GST, will withdraw from mistakes. So he is now talking in the language of Prime Minister that I made other mistakes, but after some resistance, I retraced my steps. So he is uh, talking that Prime Minister made other mistakes too, but after some resistance, he uh, revisited what his steps he has taken my attempt to dilute the new land acquisition act was abandoned in time likewise i realized that the three farm laws were fundamentally wrong and i'm happy that i repealed them so there are other mistakes which are powder kegs such as npr citizenship amendment act and recently announced agnipati scheme so again he's saying that PM Modi must think of these three uh, schemes that he has announced and also the Agnipati scheme. I assure you that I shall soon withdraw from these misadventures which are polarizing the country and promoting conflict. My fellow citizens, I make a promise that I will not yield to pressure from some quarters to restrict the scope of the places of worship act or to introduce a uniform civil code so it's talking that pm modi must be thinking about uh, places of worship act or not introducing uniform civil code i promised i promise that i shall reintroduce the constitution amendment back, uh, bill to provide one third reservation for women in parliament and state legislature so P. J. Tamram is talking that PM Modi must be thinking about uh, reintroducing the amendment bill of constitution that provides one third reservation of for women in both the parliament as well as state legislature. And he is saying that PM Modi must be thinking about uh, promise.
to issue direction to reduce the GST rates, non-shared cesses on petrols and diesels, and the price of cooking gas. Bridge the divide. So all of this, uh, the whole article is P. C. Chidambaram thinking about what P. M. Modi must be thinking in his own mind. So this is his own hypothetical situation which is created in this writing. He is saying that bridge the divide on past occasions. My ministers and I have made claims about various initiatives that my government has started. I had promised to put out 15 lakh in the bank account of every citizen. I promised that two crore jobs will be created every year. They were election time zoomlas. From this spot, I had claimed that by 2022, the income of farmers will be doubled. So he is making a taunt for the uh, prime minister. He is saying that you promised that 15 lakhs will be put in bank account of every citizen. Two crores job you promised, election time jumlas. And also PM Modi claimed that income of farmers will be doubled. Every family will have house. So he is taunting that all this is not complete. That the promise you made are not complete. These are incomplete promises that you made to the people of this country. And also talking about the economy will reach the level of US dollar 5 trillion. I confess that these works are still work in progress. I also claim that India is open defecation free and electricity has been provided to every home. These claims were not true. So now he's talking that uh, as you people may know that uh, PM Modi announced that India is now 100% open defecation free and electricity has been provided to every home. But P. J. Dambaram is saying that this is not true. These claims were not true and FHS 5, National Family Health Survey 5, have revealed that still 25.9% of the rural households and 6% of the urban households do not have access to toilet. So what uh, Prime Minister is talking about 100% is not 100%, it is approximately 75% in rural households as well as 94% in urban households. None of the 30 states surveyed is ODF. A survey conducted by Smart Power India and Niti Aayog in 2020 found that 13% of the population was either not connected to, the, connected to the grid or did not use any electricity at all. So also he's talking about another survey that found that electricity a connection is also not 100%. I promised to consult the chief minister and announced revised target dates to achieve these goals. My foremost worry is the growing communal divide. Since talking that PM Modi must be thinking of the growing communal divide, no country can progress until all people, especially women, Dalit, Muslims, tribals, feel safe and secure and are able to share the fruits of the progress. I accept that my party has to shed its prejudices and my government has to do more to put an end to the divisive rhetoric and finally punish those who promote hatred. Celebrate India's diversity and pluralism and make our government and institution more inclusive and representative of all sections of the people. So he is saying that government should think about this, all these issues celebrating India's diversity as well as making the government and institution more inclusive and more representatives of all the sections that exist in our society. He is talking that brothers and sisters, our journey will be a long one. I pledge myself to the service of this great country for all the people of India and I appeal to you to join me on this historic journey. So. Uh, this article was a hypothetical uh, situation that P.J. Dambram thought that may the Prime Minister have said this from the Red Fort. So now this uh, heading is clear that wish Honorable Prime Minister will say. So this is the situation that he created in his own mind and he wished that our Prime Minister would say that. So. What with the future prospects? I don't know what uh, whether Prime Minister would react to it or not, but he has created some uh, issues. He has uh, also pointed out some issues 
we will uh, look forward what the BJP would react to because it's a, a great article that may be a, a matter of conflict as well. So we will see whether all this occurs or not. Moving forward to the word page. So this is uh, Al Qaeda link. Al Shabaab claims responsibility. There was a um, attack that occurred in Somalia's capital Mogadishu after Al Qaeda linked militant attacked a hotel. So why is this news? Because as you know, these countries in the West Asia are fighting and are severely uh, risked by terrorism. So this happened and we will see what the Somali security force will do. So now moving forward to our next news, blast and drone attacks rock Crimea, missiles hit town near nuclear plant. So as you know, there is a nuclear plant which is uh, located in Ukraine area which is Zaporizhia nuclear plant and it is uh, uh, it has been uh, taken over by Russia and Ukraine uh, people control it. Uh, I will say that the employees are Ukrainians but it is controlled by Russian troops. So what has occurred? Russia rep reported fresh Ukrainian drone attack on Friday, a day after explosion erupted near military bases in Russia held areas of Ukraine and Russia itself. Apparent displays of Kyiv's growing ability to pummel Moscow's assets far from front line. So what has occurred in Maine, I will tell you that uh, this has and as you know a UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called that uh, they are going into societal sync. Both Russia and uh, Ukraine know that this nuclear plant is active and it can cause a great issue in not only in Russia and Ukraine but in the whole world as well because this nuclear plant is active and if some mishappening occurs then radiations will not only be limited to these two countries but it will be plummeted out to other countries and as well and these countries must remember what happened in uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and we will see in future whether they will resist themselves or will go on with such reckless behavior. So UN has uh, called for uh, IAEA which is International Atomic Energy Agency to uh, have the access to this uh, nuclear plant but we will say whether they will uh, get uh, succeed, success or not. So. Our next news is, this is not important, this is more about politics. So moving forward there is an economy page and uh, this is important. PM Gati Shakti National Master Plan to help prevent cost overruns. So what is Gati Shakti National Master Plan? It is about uh, having all the ministries in one track in order to get the development and get the infrastructure made fast and with more efficiency. So instead of uh, all the ministries like road is uh, Ministry of Road and Transport is making road and water and pipeline uh, is made by the Ministry of uh, some other. So instead of all this, these uh, all the ministries work in a in a synergy or work in uh, help of each other in the same time in order to get the work done in minimum time and in an efficient manner. So what is the news? We will see that the Pradhan Mantri Gati Shakti National Master Plan will help develop the future infrastructure in a planned manner, prevent cost overrun and increase India's cost competitiveness besides saving taxpayers money. Union Minister Piyush Goyal said on Saturday. So as you know, uh, you may have seen that sometimes a national highway is made 
and then uh, the sides of this national highway are drilled in order to get the pipeline of the water done in order to uh, uh, make this water pipeline the national highway is drilled so this gets a lot of uh, unplanned uh, infrastructure and also it leads to first making of the highway and then digging it it's got a lot a lot of uh, money wasted so this pradhan mantri gati shakti national master plan it will help to prevent this cost overrun and he said that 1000 geospatial maps have been formed for forest wildlife sanctuaries highways railway uh, infrastructure power plants and industrial zones in india so he is also talk about, uh, talking about data and all so this is not that important so what uh, will be the there will be a bisag and which will provide geoinformatics and also this will be a gis which is geospatial information system it all has been developed by pm gati shakti master plan these maps are all interconnected and because of which future infrastructure will be developed in a manner in a planned manner so every uh, ministry will have these maps and they will track each other's development so all the, the future infrastructure that will be built will be developed in a planned manner so there was a a conference he said that pm gati shakti national master plan will help in planning reconstruction of over bridges diverting routes if a forest or wildlife sanctuary comes in the way and figuring out how to construct a bridge with the smallest length for a river so all they're talking about how the plan will be made if some forest or wildlife sanctuary comes in the way how they will divert route of the infrastructure and as well as the construction so this is the it is a planning sector all these can be more effectively planned to prevent time and cost overrun so that the projects are completed in time so benefits will ultimately go to citizens any delay in government project or infrastructure is a waste of tax payer money so they are talking that there will be no delay and the infrastructure will be made in less time as well as with efficiency so goel who also holds the charge of ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution he said that if a project is completed in time it will increase india's competitiveness and he believes that gati shakti projects is perhaps first of the kind in the world and there's a lot of positiveness across the world to know about this so he's talking that india is the first country to have such a plan with uh, all the ministries working in synergy with each other in order to get things done we also talked about national single window system which is a portal for investors to obtain regulatory approvals from central and state so this is a portal which is national single uh, single window system it helps the investors to obtain approvals from center and state in order to regulate them going forward we will also try to include approval of local bodies from the same single window and he is talking about uh benefiting the uh, local bodies also with the help of this uh portal and he added that uh, investors and entrepreneurs should get approval from the same system and provide feedback for improvement uh goel said tholera has the potential to become one of the biggest and best manufacturing industrial zones so tholera sir it is a first platinum rated industrial smart city in india also there was a gift city as you may know that is located in the gujarat so also the first uh, smart city in india located in gujarat goel added that as many as 75000 startups were registered in the last 6 years and lakhs of youth connected with the startups are getting employment at opportunity so also talking about startups that this amount 75000 were registered in last 6 years and this is giving employments to lakhs of uh, young people also saying that they will play an important role in making the country an industrial superpower and also said that smart cities like the tholera which is near ahmedabad will play a big role for investors to set up industries in gujarat he also said that his ministry will soon 
begin engaging with industry to increase exports he is saying that he will he will uh, talk of international community in order to get the exports of our country increased he also said that india achieved 50 lakh crore export in fiscal year 21 22 and it aims to increase it to 2 trillion uh, which is 1 trillion in service and 1 trillion in merchandise so the goal is 2 trillion exports one in service and one in merchandise so what are the future prospects of this news i think the gati shakti plan is a well planned uh, portal which is which will make uh, the infrastructure more resilient more planned as well as efficient in a cost effective manner so also is talked about the startups so in the future more startups will be seen in our country and these startups obviously help youth to divert uh, to more private sectors and get jobs there because there is also a great opportunity there so we will be seeing the benefits of this uh, gati shakti plan in the coming years so this was a news there is no more news